David asked a question. Quick question about Exchange Online plans. As these both only allow access to email via Outlook Web Access or your preferred third-party email client, if you log into the OA site, are any of the Office web apps accessible to you, such as Word, Web, and Excel Web? It seems Microsoft only mentions these as accessible when you move up to the 365 Business Basic or higher. Yes, that's correct. It entirely depends on what plan you've got. Yeah, this is. I I, I know that. Uh, I mean, going back into the you know my my historical uh, memory of of SKUs, um, I I know when Microsoft started to to move things into the cloud, the Exchange Online just as a standalone option. Uh, There's a lot of people that went and purchased that. That was their first foray into the cloud. And so Microsoft offered those. You don't hear much about those because usually when you go and you're searching for Exchange Online, you get that business essentials. What are they? What are the SKUs? The Microsoft 365 Online Business Essentials, which is $7.99 user a month or whatever it is in your area and through your vendor. But uh, I'll stay away from pricing, but Microsoft 365 Business Professional and Microsoft 365 with Premium Security Bundle, uh, which is like double the price. Um, so you have those, but you do have the Exchange Online SKUs. And, and so from the looks you, of it, the Exchange Online SKUs do not include any of the any of the desktop or otherwise apps. Yeah. So as far as user behavior, the other part of his question. So if you have the exchange plan one, exchange plan two, that do not include office for the web, what happens when you go and click on those things? So if you do not have those licenses elsewhere, um, then you know, you'd, I, I, I would assume you'd hit some kind of error. They, and they yeah, won't work. Basically says not available. Yeah. But what you tends to happen, again, in my experience, talking with people about this, is that they have those Office 365, those web licenses through some other SKU, some other personal whatever, that it will default to that other login. I think. In my case, it's the 365 family plan. Right which doesn't give you a business exchange. It gives you basically outlook.com plus the right. uh, Excel and Word and PowerPoint and so forth. Right, so there are SKUs where you can buy Office 365 without exchange and likewise. I imagine it's exchange a very stuff. disjointed experience if you're in one account for email, a separate account for the the, the the desktop based applications and then you go to do something like save to OneDrive, like where's that going? Does that get disconnected to those out of the box features that you see in modern Outlook where it says, you know, like save to OneDrive or or where you're going to do an attachment and it prompts you to convert it to a share link from your OneDrive. Like makes me wonder how how that experience is for the users knowing that they're not going to have those back end areas. So it's it seems very like a very odd experience. I can't wrap my head around the modern day use case for this. We're so used to having platforms, whether it's Google and G Suite or Microsoft and Microsoft 365, like emails core to all of those things, but so is the storage. And those two features unlock all the other apps and services that come with both of those platforms. So uh, David's question is very specific, so I'm very curious to what the uh, the use case is for that in in the current environment where most people are working. And I'm kind of curious about the, or your favorite third party client, because the one experience that I've had, basically it's either an E1 or an E2, I forget which, because it was a couple of years ago, but <clears throat> basically not only did you not get the Office desktop apps, you didn't, you weren't allowed to, if you happen to have Outlook, you couldn't attach it. It would just basically say you can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so third party mail client 
being what EM client or Thunderbird or one of those. Yeah, Thunderbird. I have no idea what 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 the response would be to that. Yeah, I imagine they're on a Linux client. They just want the email service without the the hassle of yeah. maintaining their email stuff. And I guess in that case, sure, you you've got your own storage and your own apps for that. But uh, anyway, most of the Microsoft services are geared towards mainstream consumption. Mm -hmm. For better or worse. <laughs> would it? But would it, if you're logging in to OA, you're accessing that account on your Exchange only. Would you have to? Would you be able to click on and use the other apps, or would it look at that as a separate login, as a separate product, and so that it not work? So it wouldn't be a seamless experience with. Because essentially, you're 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 trying to log in to to those tools via a non-licensed profile. It would help a lot to know what SKUE's got. It really yeah. would. Do you know what I mean, Norm? You're making a face there, but you know, you basically you got two different licenses. Yeah. So I'm accessing OA with this license. It's not going to let me log into Office 365 stuff, which is a different, completely yeah, different profile, a license. The, the profile is a the line of delineation between those licenses. So it's if you had two separate browser sessions, sure. Yeah. But I don't see how yeah, it's happening. This is one of those things where uh, you know, and whether Microsoft is, uh, you know, they, there's some weird backwards compa compatibility stuff. Sometimes that stuff works. It just it figures it out. It understands what you're trying to do and makes the connection. And other times yeah. it it doesn't. So uh, you know, this is one of those things where you just have to troubleshoot and yeah. play around with it. Understand, hey, what what this user experience is going to be like, but. Yep. Reading the question again, it does sound like that's what they're trying to do is control the user experience. Maybe it's a governance initiative. But nonetheless, there we are. <laughs>